What the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I thought I've seen it all in World of Tanks, but what the fuck is this? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not disking the tank design itself. Believe me, I've seen weird tanks in my day. I have seen so many weird tanks in my day. But what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? I can never stop saying that. It looks like a, I know it's based off the original G.I. Joe toy things of the, you know, the Cobra's tank. But just, I never thought to see it again from all those years ago to be put in World of Tanks. I mean, it doesn't even look like a tank. It looks like an armor SUV or, a, you know, troop, you know, convoy. More than, you know, a tank. <sighs> but let's see. Is it worth it, though? Because literally, it looks cool. It it's like the guns and stuff is cool but let's take a look at it and see if it really is worth it now first and foremost we have to talk about the armaments because i will explain later on in the game why i have to do this now instead of just saying just look at the thing because it doesn't do that and i'll show you at the end of the video so let's start off with the highest millimeters of armor we're talking at pretty much only 88 millimeters and that is the very viewport on the tank itself where you see in between the gun parts now I don't know if that's penable or not but so far what I've seen most people have a hard time hitting that so that's your only little head turret part um, the underplating that holds the gun 76 millimeters but again it's so flat that staying far away with this tank is really going to annoy people. And I get it, it's a light tank. And those of you who don't know what it is, it is a light tank design. But keeping it in the back would make people, even with the most accurate guns, going to have a hard time shooting that small spot. So the underbelly of it, obviously 63 millimeters. If you're looking at straight ahead coming at you this way, yep, 63. Probably a little bit angle, I would say 64, but, but not much. The head itself is only 57 millimeters, and the rotating ring turret on the back is 57 millimeters, and this little piece of metal underneath the tank, if your tank gets flipped over. Um, yeah, so th there's nothing going to block that, so chances are don't get hit with the peak of your face. Like, don't, because you're going to get killed. Um, this one's... Yep, 50 millimeters on the side and an inside interior of the tank, which you can, can be pen easily because the tracks don't consider spatial armor if you hit anywhere there. So that's a problem. There's like many whole spots being exposed. I mean, some of it underneath is being absorbed by the tracks, but not all of it. So full fledged damage. Um, above the tank is 44 millimeters. And then you basically got the main rotating thing in the gun holding metal pieces is actually 44 millimeters. I'll try to turn them around so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And basically some parts around the head, the window itself frame holding is literally 36 millimeters. So you got some armaments where the windows are holding up, but I'm guarantee you the windows are going to be the smallest, you know, weakest part. The machine guns itself is only 35 millimeters, but I wouldn't consider them because they're not penable things anyway. You could break their guns, but obviously they're not penable. Um, the main bar that's holding up the guns is 34 millimeters. So not only do you have the viewport, which is the strongest part on the tank, but you got a spatial part armor inside of it holding the main gun. So you can't shoot it directly in the middle because you got two spatial parts you're trying to shoot at. Then you got the tracks holding itself, and good lord, this is so weird. This is so weird in World of Tanks. I never th see the day when I look at tracks for 30 millimeters, but look at the weird holding metal pieces that's holding it up. It's just so weird. Now, 25 millimeters, obviously, the whole part of the rear end on the bottom piece. Um, the under neck chin of the tank. The window itself... And the inside ring part material so this is going to be your angle part now let's talk about the window really quick since we can zoom in a little bit better the window the window is angled nearly 60 degrees or nearly 75 degrees slope so 
pending that top part of the window hold down is not going to easily pen it very directly unless you have a gun that shoots directly vertically down depending on your situation but if it's like flat on that is your arm tank part but however it could ricochet right into the gun so you got to be really careful with that it's just to keep people's heads up that just be careful with it and then the underbelly chin of it is pretty much the same done 20 millimeters tracks 19 millimeters where is this is it underneath the tank like is it under the tracks i don't know oh wait is that no yeah that is it okay you can't see it i have to zoom in you see the machine gun circles here i'll zoom in. see this circle right now inside the machine gun or inside the 90 mil cannon those little circles are apparently the armaments. I was like looking around the whole tank wondering what the hell. I'll point it out to you guys, but it's like, it's like, what? I couldn't even see that. That was weird. I didn't even know that was an armament. I thought that was part of the main cannon. But nope, that little circle, 19 millimeters. Weird. Now, obviously inside the tank has a spa thing. There's two layers of millimeters of armor inside the Hiss tank's rear end. And that part is 15 millimeters. And all the top part is 15 millimeters. Thankfully, there's no artillery, so I haven't seen any use of the top armor yet. Now, 20, 12 millimeters. Let's see where that's going to take me. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit closer. Ah, it's the top part of the machine guns. I'll point to it again for you audience to see what I'm talking about. Although, I don't know what the whole point is this back part is. This little weird device thing, because... It's not on the tank, so it's weird. But the machine gun top part is only 12 millimeters. That is, why would they bother? It's literally... Ugh, whatever. Now, what's the 10 millimeters? Uh, here we go again. Let's see. Which one's 10s? Which one's 10s? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. You can't see it, but I'll freeze frame it right there and point to it. There's a little line... Right underneath the gun, this is going to be a lot of editing for me, that is literally that armament. It's a little freaking line in front of the gun that is literally 10 millimeters. So there's a spatial armor where the whole 10... So there's two spatial armors in the gun. But I don't say it's a lot, but it's enough. Now the armaments around the track thing is 9 millimeters. Fire enough. And the boxes and stuff like that, plus a little bit of the plating, spa plating, is 6 millimeters. Ooh, that was a lot to go over, but this is what it looks like when it's fully done, when you look through the whole thing. And, like I said, I'll explain to you guys later why I had to do that, because it, Wargaming forced me to. Now, the rest you can all see in description paper, so I'm going to just basically describe, um, basically... The, the main things that are going to be a game changer or let alone something if you want or don't want. Obviously, yes, the guns have 90 mil. Now, the biggest question for everybody who's just seen this and thinking that going right to the store right now looking at it. Is it a tool, you know, dual wielding guns? Unfortunately, no. This thing shoots a single shot. And you think, why? For doing 240 damage, you this will be the perfect opportunity to bring in dual-wield weapons like you said about the Soviet Union you guys were promising to bring in. And, no, nope, we get a 90 mil that shoots a single shot. You wasted an opportunity to bring in a light tank with a two autoloaders. I don't care if they long time reload it. For doing only 240, which honestly, for the damage you see up there, I would say 290. I mean, 219. Like, 19 would be the best bet, because that's all I low roll as. But don't get me wrong, it's not a bad tank, because I'm going to show you a video soon of the battle that a previous did, and show you how terrifying it would be if you leave it alone. But in other words, it, it, it's, it's such a disappointment that it doesn't have the twin guns. Still a good tank, just... Really, you missed your opportunity there, Wargaming. You really did. Now, for equipment pieces, this is controversial. I put in ventilations, and um, unfortunately, though, there is no 
equipment pieces. Let me look again real quick. Just really quick. Yeah, I don't see any acceleration reloading thing. Iron more reactor ability, flame tank. So there's no reloading equipment perk on it. So the only one you got is ventilations. I got binoculars. This is optional. You could put in um, camouflage, but there's no point. There's no point in that because you're in Cold War. In Cold War, you know, true vision still exists. So even if you're hiding in the shadows, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work one bit. So I trade that out with gun stabilizers for shell accuracy. Um, you could put in aiming speed for sniping annoyance. You can have probably three time advanced zooming. It would work because this is the type of tank you need to keep far away from the battlefield. Yes, I know it's fast because if you look at its speed, it goes up to 75. I almost got it up to 80 for God's sakes. Um, but the problem is you're dealing with a 90 mil gun and a 90 mil gun ain't going to kill one tier rank two. Sorry, I'm used to World War II kind of tier matchmaking. This is Cold War. Like this is a rank two premium. So you're going to be seeing like a lot of powerful tanks that can harm you. So it's best to just shoot them at range. As much as I hate to say it, shoot them in range, get as much cover as possible, and hold down. And you will see why, because when I did a hold down in the video you're going to see, it's really excellent to do that because of how small those guns are on top of your head. It makes it really hard for people to shoot them. So, it's a, literally a hold down scout tank. It, that's how I describe it. I mean, yes, you can go aggressive. You can do all this. I know all you people are typing down in the comments say who has it saying like you can do this. You can. However, it's just more balance to snipe and make it hard for the enemy to hit you because you're an annoyance tank, not a killer, an annoyance. Like kind of like the Panzer IC only if you shoot someone with more health than you and armor that you can't pen half the time. That's literally that's the best way I could describe it. It's like the Panzer IC with a single shot going up against, you know, Panzer IC is a tier 3, I would say, going up against 5s. So, and you could still pen them, but it's like, e -e -e -e. yeah, you, you don't want to be the one getting hit by it. So, consumables, I use the traditional fire extinguisher, you know, first aid and, you know, repair kit because it is a light tank. I know people of you in the comments saying, well, why not use your healer, your healing abilities? Yes, I know. But again, this is a light tank. I'll do that with a heavy tank, knowing that I could take more abuse. But for right now, a light tank could easily get set on fire. A light tank can definitely get tracked and I could get killed. And a light tank could definitely lose crew. So, I'm still used to doing the three basic old style versions, not the smoke screen or the freaking, um, you know, flame torch. So, sorry, I'm just using old classic. So, let's go to ammunition cost since you see everything else on paper when you go into the game store and stuff. It's got some good detection range and stuff like that. Okay, because there's a lot more we have to still talk about this. Um... Your first rounds, I made a mistake of carrying 45 because this thing doesn't do a lot of damage. I wanted to carry it at least, but unfortunately though, I wanted to keep that much because of the, you know, 45 shells seems like a fair deal and premium shot 25 because I don't know what tanks are going to come out in the future. I know tanks now is really hard to pen, especially some of them, and... It's that's why I keep 45 of the standard rounds. Don't get me wrong, I might change it. You couldn't change it up to 60 or 70 and only carry 10 premium rounds, but but why? Why would you want that? Because if you face up a tank that you can't pen, how are you going to kill it? There's not enough ammo and enough damage to consider this, so I try to keep it evenly as possible. So first round costs 410, I carry like 45 because my premium rounds that is heat. Even though I I know a lot of you are saying, why carry that many rounds when it can cost 5200 a shell? I carry 25 
The problem is there is one couple of tanks that you can't pen, like some Soviets and stuff, that you need to have that rounds if they're holding down. Well, then again, if they're holding down, you just get the frick out of there. You have the speed to get out of there. But there's some tanks in the future that I know they're going to bring out that's going to be extremely hard to pen. So I have to look forward to that in the future. And, and right now, I'm only carrying 10 rounds of these. And you're probably wondering... Why, Fury? There is no tank. At that point, if you can't pend it and you literally have to annoy the shit out of it, why you waste capacity of 10? This is for the other Hess tanks. These shells can be okay at harming Hess tanks. So, you see, like 100 millimeters to 500 millimeters. If you could pen their flat parts, you can. But the Hess tank only has so much millimeters of armor. You could pen it with heat kill it instantly so that's the only reason why i carry it it's for meant for hess control pests kind of thing hess control pests <laughs> sounds like a really awesome spray can and there you have it um what else is there to talk about i mean everything else you can see on paper let's talk about for you those that i know all of you did get is the season pass ultimate and our beloved and also hated character of the G.I. Joe franchise, Cobra. Now, if you get the season pass like I did, you'll get two commanders of the Cobra. You'll get, oh, if I didn't accidentally press B twice, you get his three stars, and I'm guessing they're going by stars now, and that's going to make me upset because this is really dumb of doing that. But you get stars now. To where it shows how many perks you get right off the bat. Like, for example, your first commander, 3D model, if you get the season pass, you get three open slots. However, you also get his classifier profile, where you don't see him on the battlefield, where he's a two-star, and you could basically put perks and stuff like that onto him for only two slots. I guess that's how they're doing it. I don't like it that much, how this whole... Even with the American or the Soviets. It, it just... I don't know. And they added in a new... I know this is not off topic, but I really wanted to say this because there is a new update they did bring into the game. If you select a commander, there's a button now called... You know... You know, pre, you know like looking at their ability. Now you can put hats on the character. Or if you got Rambo, for example, Rambo can like get like all these other outfits from the movie. And I just don't know. It's just to me, it's really not worth it. Like I'll show you real quick. Hang on. I'll just show you real quick, really quick if I can. Like, can I see the commander detail? Yep. Like, see, they got one skin for Snake. And they got many other skins for the other characters, and it's like, why? Why would why would this be a thing? Now that's old school portraits. And let's look at Rambo real quick. Rambo is like the worst one of them all, because there's one, two, three, four skins for him that you have to pay a thousand gold each. And downright F fail. Like, if I had to rate that, it would be literally a 2 out of 10. We should not be paying a 1,000 gold for these skins or different customizations. We should automatically have them. <sighs> anyway, off track. Sorry about that. So now he's standing outside the tank. And now every victory screen or anything like that, you can now see him on, you know, if you're the top three, pretty much players. So, let's get into the game. Alright guys, here we are. I'm in a replay battle of my first game into it, and pretty much it sums up what you're supposed to do with the Hiss tank. But when we get to the battlefield, this thing is really fast, like I said. Almost going like 80, almost. Really not bad, although it doesn't really turn out a dime in my opinion. Um, so my personal opinion with this whole G.I. Joe and the Cobra tank, it feels so weird that this is a tank. I mean, look at it. It looks like something you would buy in the 1960s toys. It just looks like it belongs on that shelf of old nostalgic toy collections. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love this little annoyance. 
And that's all it is, is a little annoyance. Because literally, doing only a little damage it does for shooting doesn't really kill anything easily unless it's not spotted. So, I'm trying to play it smart. I'm staying ahead of the team, but not like, you know, going out there going to kill willy-nilly. So, here I am, shooting at the enemy far away, only showing my gun and a little bit of my turret armor. Making it really hard for them to pen because, obviously, the glass window's angled, so it's even more of a chance that they can't pen me. So, I try moving up now since now there's people out there trying to shoot. I don't know what the enemy team's doing. They, now they're shooting at him, trying to give him cover. But um, while I'm shooting away, let's keep talking about this. Honestly, I'm surprised this is not a twin barrel shooter. Like, shoot, like you know, 219, one shot, and then the other one shoots another shot. Like an auto reloader, you know, like a two clip thing. You know, like the Soviet tanks we were supposed to get. I thought it was going to do that, but nope. It fires a single shell every time, and I hate that. Now, here comes the next tank I'm going to have to review when it comes out. The G.I. Joe um, um, tank. I don't know what it's called. I mean, I'll leave a little title up there. But basically, I'm going to review that. Basically, it's just the Germany's Leopard. Like, Leopard with a... It's supposed to have a 152, but it's a 130 instead. The Commander Hatch don't even exist on that. But then again, look at the hiss tank, and you tell me that exists? No. So, sorry not to look away from the fighting. So basically, I'm shooting, I'm shooting. I finally got hit in the track. Someone finally tried to shoot me. So I backed off. And remember, this is not AI. This is real multiplayer shooting. So here I am, shooting away, pretty much trying to get as much pens as possible with a little tiny gun. Now... To me, personally, the damage on this gun is way, way too weak. Look at my ammo down there. I started off with a huge chunk of rounds. And then, literally, I'm down to 19, and I haven't killed anything yet. There's one kill. <laughs> but the Hiss tank does not do a lot of damage. However, it does do a lot of freaking um, pounding on people. I mean, yeah. You may think to yourself, oh, low pending light tank. Ooh, it's like, I'd rather stick with my mediums and stuff that do high pens. And that's where you're going to get killed a lot because these people annoyed me. I mean, not annoyed me, but these people ignored me. And I was just shooting and pending away, taking little by little health. And then eventually, they're like, oh crap, I'm going to die. <laughs> literally, it's like, that's... That's all I could say. It's like, literally, this tank is not something you want to ignore. The fast reloading, the fast, the better angle hold down armor. It's just insane. Now, hang on. Let me pause it for a minute really quick. Since we'll get more into it in a minute. I just want to see, like, what did they see for an enemy for a little bit. Hang on. Just let me zoom on over here a little bit. So they're at this type of altitude of this tree. So, oh, yeah. By just going straight at the tank right now, just trying to shoot this thing would be insanely to do. Not only mentioning, like I said, that top part right here doesn't fuse with the tank. It's just the gun. So shooting that's going to be a little bit of a problem. I think you could, supposedly you can hit, you know, the middle part where the windows is, but still, that that's a hard shot to pull when literally if it's hold down like that. So, yeah, sorry guys, let's go back to the thing real quick, there we go, oh, right. sorry about that, alright, so, now there's one more tank left, and I only got his GI, and the other ones are all dead over there, and we're the last ones alive, so I said to myself, well, I was about to charge out, then when the cap base started, I'm like, well, maybe I should turn back, and, um, try to defend the base, since I have the most speed out of G.I. Joe here. Until I realize that there's way too many people over there. Even me trying to snipe over there. Because, again, they have a lot of hit points. I didn't want to charge in there and get myself killed. It was it was going to be insane. And then when I saw in the right left corner, literally I'm seeing more tanks going in. Another Hiss tank, another T-62, another um, M-60. I'm like, uh, ha, ha, ha. I'm, I'm just going to go try to cap their base. I'm only down to four rounds of my normal rounds before I have to fire premium. 
So I said to myself, well, fine. I, we, this is a lost cause anyway. I'm going this way. So I'm going this way. Just going to dodge all this. And then I see another hiss tank. I accidentally rammed into it. And I'm like, ow, that hurt. But I killed it. And then I see another tank over here. And I'm trying to shoot him. But I didn't see the M60, though. Surprisingly, I didn't. So when I'm driving up here, I'm like, oh, only one tank here. And then I'm going to try to kill it. And then I got too cocky and boom, dead. <laughs> and that's that, That's all there is to it. I mean, you're probably thinking to yourself, Vera, you didn't show a good game. I'm only seeing a couple of pens, how they couldn't hit you. And you only killed, like, one guy. It's like, how is this, like, any better? Well, let me show you the logs real quick when we get back. And I'll show you what I mean. So basically, yeah, it was a defeat. And somebody bought Rambo 3D. Poor guy, you spend like nearly 4,000 gold that you could have used on something else and you bought Rambo. I mean, good for you if you saved it, but at the same time, no. Well, somebody's got a mark on that. And then you got Cobra over there doing the least amount of damage that I did. That guy did 7,000 and something. That's a lot of damage, but I'll show you mine when we get to the actual log. And there you have it, audience. I did 4,988 damage, 29 direct hits, which means module hits. I killed two. I don't know. Oh, yeah, the ramming of the other one. I just shoot the hell out of the other, other ones, but just got the other thing. thing. Got assistant of 419, blocked only 390, and detected five enemies. And I have walked away with 148,000 credits. Without premium, I would walk 90k. And, and if you want to look at the leaderboard, I did more damage than the entire team. Because of those tanks ignoring me the entire time, I did the most damage on my team. I didn't do it in total because I got Rambo over there. I told you, did 7,463. But I did decently okay for this type of thing and um yeah so let's go back to the garage for the final verdict so here we are so my final verdict for this now cobra well i used to have been a big fan of gi i mean gi joe i loved it when i was when it first aired i was probably the last of my generation to see you know gi joe before they took it down but at the same time though I mean, bringing back these, I love the nostalgia, and I really love this tank. I really do. I have fun playing with it, even how weird it is, but there is some minor problems we have to talk about. First of all, 90 mil. Way too small. I really wish it had an auto-reloader where I fire two shots at once, balancing it out to making like 400 and something easily. That way it would be more deadlier and then people would not ignore me like they did because they kind of did because I'm here I am shooting away at these people. They don't even give a damn and I'm just doing 218 to them every shot instead of doing like, you know, 400 like everybody else is doing. So be mindful you're not going to do a lot of damage in this tank. However, as you saw in that game, if nobody ignores you, it is an annoyance. It is literally an absolute, utterly an annoyance. Especially if you hold down just right where they can't see much. You're going to make them, like, hate themselves. Especially how sloped the angle is and where the gun is is a little bit harder to pen because of how tiny it is. Especially if you're doing it from many miles away, it's not going to be easy for people to shoot at. So... And the design of the tank is just, like I said, it's so fucking weird. I mean, I never thought to see a tank that looks like an assault SRV or fucking RV kind of thing, where it's not really a tank, but more like a space tank kind of way. That's basically what it looks like, a space tank. But, all in conclusion, doesn't have much armor. I really don't like the fact, and I just want to say this real quick before we get into the whole detail of it. When I went to the store and looked at this tank, and then basically reviewed its armaments, it doesn't tell you the armaments. It doesn't tell you that no more. Like, for example, I already got that tank. I'm going to look at the one you get in the season pass that you could look if you try to look at it in the store, mind you. 
it gives you details, but it doesn't tell you the armaments where it is. Like, for example, like, they talk about the damage pen, they talk about the horsepower, they talk about all this other crap on here, but they don't show you the armaments no more. So, what the hell, Wargaming? You're making me have to do it again, which is fine, it gives me something to do, but why do you have it where it only says how much millimeters it has, when you know clearly, Wargaming, that that's not all the millimeters. There's no way that it's that type of armaments. Everybody knows every part of the armaments has a percentage of different millimeters. The head is all not 250. There's no way. The head all around it is not 250. You look at each and every piece, there's one thing weak about it. So this is really fucking stupid wargaming. So, yeah. To get that all aside, we'll review that another day when I get through 100% on the season pass, because I am going after it, because it is a German design. I apologize for that audience. I had a phone call coming in. Let's just wrap this up. In conclusion, really fun tank. Really an annoyance hold down tank. So, I have to rate this tank literally a 8.10, like 8.9 out of 10, sorry. It's really fun to play. Now, when I rated that high, I mean light tank players. Really, really want to annoy people light tanks. And I'm only rating it an 8.9 out of 10 is because if you do want to get this tank, there is a cheaper version to get it in the store for 13,000 gold. But if you get this, just go a little bit higher with your gold. You get the Scorpion, you you know, you get the Corp, uh, Cobra Commanders, two of them. You get the tank, you get, you know, 125 Season Pass, and you get the Season Pass unlocked, and you get a garage slot, obviously, for the other thing. I don't think the other one gives you much. Yeah, it just gives you a garage and the owner of the garage. It doesn't even give you the Cobra Commander. Now, you could get it in the Season Pass, but you only get the profile pick. You don't even get the... um. 3D model of them if you want that. So my advice is to make sure you get this deal right here if you're going to plan on purchasing it. But for a tank itself, if you buy it by itself, I have to give it a literally a... I want to say since you only just get the tank and saw on how to play, I would say 7 out of 10. It is still fun to play, but it's way down there. The only reason I gave it an 8.9 out of 10 is because the Ultimate Season Pass gives you a lot more. Even though I don't like spending a lot, it gives you more value of the Season Pass jumpstart. So, you got that too. So, in my conclusion, get the Season Ultimate Pass if you're going to get the tank. If you miss it and this tank comes back out again in the future... Then get it then if you want to, but you won't get the Cobra Commander. I know that for a fact. You probably have to buy him separately, pay him more. So, good chance of getting it now in the Season Pass, where it's valuable is really high because of that. And just not get it when it's just its thing, because if you just want the tank, that's fine. But if you want the whole complete set like I see here, yeah, you're going to need to pay the Ultimate Season Pass. So, as much as I hate to say that. So, that's my conclusion for Cobra. Tune in next time to we look at pretty much G.I. Joe, because I am going to look over that tank, and we're going to see if G.I. Joe lives up to the height of the high expectation as this tank here, when I hide it writing for what it is for 7.10 for itself. Let's hope that one does good, too. And I've got a gut feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more G.I. Joe tanks in the future. So stay tuned with us and we'll take a look at it. Even if I get them or not, we'll take a look and see what they do. But until then, I will see you comrades on the battlefield. Bye guys.